Deadpool and Wolverine is right around the corner and it seems every comic book fan and just in general a lot of movie fans are super excited for what should be the MCU slam dunk as a love letter to previous X-Men movies as well as just the continuation of Deadpool joining the MCU. This movie looks awesome. I already have my early invite. You'll have my early review fairly soon the week of release when the embargo is up. But with that said, I wanted to dive in and talk about what movies and shows that I absolutely think you need to check out or maybe would recommend you check out before you go and see this film if you want to get the best of it all. Sean Levy, the director of this, has done a really good job at saying you don't have to watch anything prior, nor is this going to really affect the future, but this is just a damn good movie. But I do think there will be a lot of callbacks and things that people, maybe if you haven't seen all these movies and shows, you might be a little bit confused on. I think these will help you overall enjoy the experience just a little bit more. So without further ado, let's dive into this. Really coming up first, I think the most obvious thing is, is you should probably have checked out at least Deadpool 1 and 2. And the reason I say those is one, Deadpool 1 is for me personally one of the best comic book movies of all time. And Deadpool 2 is enjoyable for the most part. I haven't gotten back to it on my rewatch yet. I think that's coming up over this next weekend. But for me, Deadpool 1 and 2 are just a really good time in the end of the day and i think for me in terms of what deadpool and wolverine is going to be giving is we are seeing a lot of deadpool's friends in here you're going to want to see those relationships how did he build up them they don't seem like they're a major piece of this but they seem like they are a major part of the reason that he's doing whatever he has to do to save them and i think if you haven't seen those movies yet you should because it'll show why he loves his friends so much. And I think that's actually one of the most joyous parts about it. I'm still hit or miss on how they're handling Wade Wilson and Vanessa's relationship in Deadpool and Wolverine because I think that is actually the heart of this franchise. So it's going to be very interesting to see how I feel on that. But to just suffice and say, if you haven't seen these movies, you probably should. It adds all that development to who Deadpool is and Wade Wilson himself. Which up next brings me down to the Wolverine trilogy. And that I say Wolverine Origins, the Wolverine movie and Logan. Now, some of these I don't think will build up to the entirety and they're going to reference every little thing in here, but I absolutely think that they are going to talk about certain things from these movies and particularly you want to know where Wolverine has come from. My prediction is that this Wolverine is completely different than any others we've ever seen Hugh Jackman play, but I still think that some of these events may have happened to him and you also do want to know the legacy of what Ryan Reynolds and of course Wade Wilson has in the back of his head when it comes down to a Wolverine. Plus, Origins was the first time that we technically ever did see Deadpool. It was just not the version of Deadpool that we wanted. And I think for me, Origins is a little bit important to see the backstory of when they first actually met as people. Deadpool 2's end credit scene kind of plays into that. And then The Wolverine, I just think, is a really underrated movie that I think a lot of you guys should check out. It takes place in Japan. It's badass. It's Wolverine going up against ninjas and samurais. I really like it. And then, of course, Logan was supposed to be Hugh Jackman's final go around as Wolverine. And I think for us, there's been a lot of worries about that. Logan, for me, is one of the best comic book movies of all time. Top two, top three of all time. And I think, yeah, you should probably check that out. I think they're going to absolutely make references to that film particularly. And to kind of round this up. Uh, in like the major category, because I, I feel like this is like the tier one. You need to see these to really kind of understand a lot. And then we're going to get down to tier two is Loki. Uh, Loki is like the only MCU project that I definitely think is a necessary need to watch. And the reason I say that is because Loki has the TVA, the Time Variance Authority, which is clearly seen in the Deadpool and Wolverine trailer. If you haven't seen Loki you might be a little bit confused on that entire nuance and what the TVA is. I'm sure they'll probably re-explain it because they got to re-explain it to Deadpool, but to even get a bigger understanding of who the TVA is, and particularly The Void, which seems to be a major player in this movie, Spe specifically everything I've seen in the trailer, it looks like they are in The Void for a majority of the movie. I would highly recommend it because both those things are just very intriguing, but as well as I don't want you to be like a little bit confused when you go and see Deadpool Wolverine. But what I also will add is Loki is just a phenomenal show that I think deserves all the love and credit. It's a little bit slow, but it is a show that I did not care for at first. But once I finally checked it out, I was like, damn, 
this is really good. And ranking into my tier two, let's start out with the original trilogy for the X-Men movies. I think the original trilogy of the X-Men films was very important for its time and particularly what it did for comic book films. But as well as if you want to know a little bit more about Hugh Jackman's Wolverine and his journey to play in Wolverine, he's in each and every one of those movies. And as well as if certain cameos are going to appear in this movie, such as maybe some of the original X-Men, you're definitely gonna want to check this one out. The cream of the crop, are they the best ever? And some of them, one of them is, I would say. The other two, I, one's not that great, and one is pretty good and holds up for the most part. But I think in general, to just kind of see an evolution of what we are celebrating here in a love letter to really much what kicked off the comic book movie boom is X-Men. And this original trilogy... Again, if we're getting cameos of some of these actors, you're one gonna want to see it, or else you might just be like, isn't that that actor from this, and isn't that this actor from that? That might still happen because we're supposedly getting variants of Deadpool and Wolverine, so we're gonna see multiple versions of them. And I imagine, for the most part, it's gonna be different actors playing each and every one of those, which I think is really cool. Getting into tier two, jumping in next is the First Class Trilogy. Don't care about New Mutants. Do not care about uh, X-Men, Dark Phoenix. Just watch the First Class Trilogy, which is an excellent trilogy trilogy for the most part uh first class is an amazing movie days of future past is an amazing movie apocalypse depending on who you talk to there's amazing moments to it and then there's lackluster but in the end of the day again you get more wolverine first class not so much but you get to know about some of the characters and some of the origin stories to some of the x-men that may or may not show up in here and maybe they won't maybe they will if they do cool if they're not Oh well, but there are other characters in First Class that are showing up in this that we've seen in the background, such as Azaziel, who I think is a cool little cameo in there. Days of Future Past, though, brought Hugh Jackman back to the front and center, and it was an incredible movie, and brought both trilogies headlining together with all the actors, and it was very much one of the big culminations of everything coming. And Days of Future Past, one of the best X-Men movies, again, same with First Class, highly recommend watching just any of those I imagine some stuff may be brought up from Days of Future Past, so I think that is a necessary watch. But then Apocalypse. The reason, I and I wasn't thinking about mentioning Apocalypse in here because I'm not the biggest fan of it. I think the reason you should check it out is to see Wolverine's little part in here. It is important. In the end of the day, I think it is. And I think that is a moment that would be interesting to see. And I think it might get referenced again in Deadpool and Wolverine. And it's one of my favorite things from the comics and basically any time they touch on Wolverine's past. So definitely check out the Weapon X moment in Apocalypse at the very least if you don't want to suffer through that movie. I know some people are fans. I just I don't really care for it. Up next, though, let's jump into the final tier of films that I would recommend you check out if you have the spare time. These are like the spare time ones, ones that maybe will tie in, maybe will not, and mostly go towards some of the rumored cameos. So up first, we have Elektra and Daredevil, which I think are hit or miss for many people. Some people enjoy them for the most part. Other people despise these movies. I think they're fine, but we do know that Jennifer Gardner's Elektra is supposed to be in this movie. This was released from The Hollywood Reporter and Variety and reported and scooped on, but other than her, I know they're saying Daredevil's not in this and that Ben Affleck's not in this, but maybe he came back. It'd be cool. It'd be nice to know a little bit more about those characters, though, and that's why I would recommend these ones at the very least to just understand who these variant versions are. Alongside that, I also just want to throw out their Blade in the original Fantastic Four with, like, Chris Evans. I do not know if Wesley Snipes will show up in here, just speaking on Blade. I personally don't care if he shows up, and I'm not saying that because I don't enjoy Wesley Snipes' Blade, but I'm so bitter on the whole part that we can't get Ali's Blade film off the ground. I would rather just see a variant version of him, but I think if we are going to see this, we're going to see Snipes, and I think it would be a nice little cameo to see him just cutting heads and killing people in the void. It'd be pretty badass, but alongside that, I mentioned the Fantastic Four, the original one. I think these are like a product of its time. They're fun for what they are. But to see Chris Evans as the Human Torch, I think that would be cool to see how he was there and now he's Captain America. And I honestly, I, I, I wouldn't have said this six months ago. I think he's in this movie though. And I think he might actually have a more significant part than I'm expecting. And I would actually be quite interested in that personally. So I think it'd be fun to go back, revisit that, and then come back to this. And last but not least, Spider-Man No Way Home. I think the reason I say this one is I don't expect any Spider-Man to show up. Maybe Tom Holland does. I don't think we see Tobey Maguire or Andrew Garfield. But if you want to know the kind of experience that you're going to be getting with probably Deadpool and Wolverine and like the love letter to the X-Men franchise and to what Fox had done, 
I think that is what you should check out with No Way Home because No Way Home was a love letter to live action Spider-Man movies and the lore and everything that's kind of gone into all the trilogies and of course even the Andrew Garfield film. And I think for me, the same thing and the same experience and feeling we got watching No Way Home is basically going to be for Deadpool and Wolverine and maybe even better. Um, and I say that as someone who loves No Way Home. I say that as someone who thinks Spider-Man is his favorite superhero, but also Deadpool is like right then and there. And the reason I say that is because as much as we are expecting cameos galore, I think they're going to fit the story so well that it's not going to matter. And No Way Home, they did the same thing there, but I'm expecting Deadpool and Wolverine to overall have that great package. At least the first act is, is okay. It's slow. It's a little bit slow, but... I think Deadpool and Wolverine's about to give us something good. And if you want anything else to kind of prepare you, just kind of understand the, the knowledge that I, I fully think Channing Tatum as Gambit is going to show up in here. Some of you guys might be like, why is why is Channing Tatum as Gambit in here? Because Channing Tatum was originally supposed to play him. We never got the movie. It just got delayed, 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 and then canceled once Disney bought Fox. I think he's showing up. So those are the movies and shows i highly recommend you check out before going to watch deadpool and wolverine if not after if you find this video after you've seen the movie and you haven't seen all these then you should definitely go check them out i think a lot of these are pretty damn good i've been going back through a marathon some of these movies are excellent and better than i remember and some are fine <laughs> so to, to say nicely but thank you guys so much again for watching this make sure to hit that like subscribe button and of course until next time stay classy